Hey, this is the Great Lugia, and here is part 21 of my Pokemon Region Adventures go through. So basically, yeah, now we're finally going to start heading east. And here's a cut bush, like that cut bush on off Route 9, I think, in Cerulean. And here's a rocket. So yeah, this episode has a lot of battling, and I mean a lot. There's a lot of trainers on this route. Actually, just a lot of trainers until the next city. So yeah, just using Ember when it KOs. I'm guessing it would have KO'd even without the crit, because Sandshrew don't have the best special defense. And now for a Spinarak. And yeah, Spinarak and Ariados are pretty cool Pokemon. Hmm. I might use one if I see it, not sure. So yeah, now Spinarak is down. And yeah, so that was easy. And she actually gives you a very useful TM. Um, first, I'm not sure what it is, but I check, and it turns out to be Sludge Bomb. Unfortunately, though, no Pokemon on my team can learn it. Aside from that Oddish, which I'm just using for Cut. And here's something I don't get. They have a Cut tree, like, right after that last one. So I never d really got that. And so yeah, here's a trainer. And so yeah, one thing I really don't like is that we already have another route where it's raining. So still, Charmeleon isn't at full power. It's not bad enough that the first gym leader was a water type. That the second gym leader was an ice type leader, but she had a Lapras. No, there has to be like so many w routes where it's raining out. It's like you want a Charizard, you want a Charizard. Well, tough luck, cause you're getting sh you're getting really messed up right here because Charizard are too awesome to deserve so easily. Well, granted, they kind of are, but. Hmm. Still seems a bit like a dick move to just, you know, do all this stuff to Charmeleon. I mean, you know, the main example was in Red and Blue. Basically, the first two gym leaders, who basically Charmeleon slash Charmander didn't do, like, any damage to. But, um... Still, at least... But at least then, there were no routes where it was raining... <sighs> Whatever. Hopefully the next gym, Charmeleon, will do a bit more. Um, so yeah, here's a bell sprout, another one. Oh yeah, and hopefully this will be the last route where it's raining. So, since last time I haven't actually recorded anymore. The only other thing I've recorded so far is part 22, which I have yet to narrate, obviously. I should have that up tomorrow. Basically, my weekend's been a bit busy, so I haven't had time to record or narrate much. Oh yeah, note, I'm narrating this on Monday, and I'm gonna upload it on Monday. No, not Monday. Ah, oh, I feel like an idiot. I'm narrating this on Sunday. So yes, I'm narrating this right before uploading it. Because I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to... Right now, I'm trying to, whatchamacallit... Get so that I have one video a day. I have been a bit busy, but I am trying to do that. And here's a sun kern. I can sit, I'm considering, well, I was considering using a sun flora because sun flora are cool. And so, yeah, I don't set up the repel yet simply because I want to wait a little bit to see if there's any good Pokemon, and turns out there's no other new Pokemon. By the way, I think I forgot to mention that route right next to Cycling Road's entrance. Oh yeah, and here's Aerial Ace, which is an interesting TM. I'm wondering if Furret will learn it, but it turns out, um, whatchamacallit, the only one who could learn it is Charmeleon. Eh. Might teach it that when it evolves. Not sure. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I won't need a flying type because I'll have Charizard. Yeah. 
Yeah, I might teach it Aerial Ace. Not sure. So yeah, here's a Makuhita. Makuhita are cool. Um, Hariyama are also cool, but I think there's some fighting types I like more. Mainly, um, uh, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, Hitmontop. I really like those guys. Too bad I, like, never use them. Oh, and there was just a misclick on my part. Meant to do, um, water gun, but it doesn't matter. Aside, if you're annoyed that I wasted, um, about one second of your life. If you're annoyed that I wasted one second of your life, say, wasted, in the comments, or something like that. And so, here's another trainer. So yeah, a lot of trainers. And I forget what this guy has. Actually, I think I might remember what one of them has. Oh yeah, he has a matchup. I for oh wait no wait, it's not for a sec I thought that sprite that trainer sprite was from Diamond Pearl Platinum but it's not yeah and here's a metadite metatite yeah metatite metatite and metacham have always been a bit, looked a bit weird to me never really liked their designs um. And of course, in-game metadata are the most annoying things because they keep spamming detect. And I don't have toxic. You're not going to get a speed boost. You're not predicting, like, you're not trying to scout out my moves or anything, so what's the point? You're just wasting people's time. And power points. And so, here's a bug catcher. And, um... So yeah, he has a bee drill, which are cool. And last time a Vaporeon fought a bee drill, it wasn't doing too well. Granted, it was two levels lower. This time Vaporeon is six levels higher and it's raining, so one KO. Awesome. And now Vaporeon's at level 26. So yeah, my team's doing really well so far. At level 25, it's still gaining experience at a good rate. Thankfully. Like, the levels are higher, but not too high. It's not like, um, oh my god, one complaint I have about Platinum, I know some people have said the exact opposite, but in my opinion, Platinum was like one of the easiest Pokemon games. I honestly have no clue why other people thought it was so tough. I mean, basically... I'm the kind of guy who doesn't take a ton of Pokemon, then replace them later on in game. I think of my team in advance, or think of it as I go along, and if I see a Pokemon I really want to use, I'll put it on my team. Yeah, I first I had... Oh yeah, here I'm just using Dig a lot. It's a bit like Ed and Eddie. Dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole. Yeah. But anyways, what happened with Platinum was... First Pokemon Chimchar, then I got a Zubat, then they both, then, by the time I reached Heart Home, I had a Monferno and a Crobat, which is awesome because you get Soothe Bell really early. And here's a Sunstone, here's why I really considered using a Sunkern. But then I checked, um, the move set for Generation 3, and it turns out, the only good special moves it learns in Generation 3 are all grass types, which is kind of annoying. If it was Generation 4, I'd probably use it and teach it, um, Sludge Bomb, but, nah. So yeah, Water Pulse for the KO. And anyways, after, and basically after the Hard Home Gym, I used the old rod to get a mad, the good rod to get a, like, level 20-ish Magikarp and got a Gyarados. And so, yeah, basically, in-game, pl in Platinum, I was just completely sweeping. Without any grinding, I made it to the Elite Four with all of my Pokemon at level 52. Well, some were at 51, others were at 52. I just grinded to make them all the same level. But when I reached the Elite Four, all of my Pokemon were either 51 or 52. Without any grinding 
at all throughout the entire game. Not to mention the Elite Four in that game was a couple of levels lower. Granted, they were actually still pretty tough, considering there wasn't the huge level difference there usually is. Like, I remember that Gliscor being a pain. It has Earthquake and all three of the Elemental Fangs. That was really annoying. And so, yeah, basically... Um... Hopefully I'll have Part 22 uploaded tomorrow. And record some more. So, stay tuned for the next part. Alright, um... Bye.